So it's time for another delicious dish in the Mass Appeal Kitchen. We're with Sam and Tom from Mission Cantina in Amherst, and we are going to make a great fish dish. Gentlemen, thanks for stopping by today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having it us. It smells good in here already. How do we get started? Well, we're going to be making uh, Veracruz today, which is a regional dish from the state of Veracruz. Okay. We have the fish already in the oven, which we're using today is going to be grouper. A lot of the times in Mexico, you'd see uh, red snapper. Yeah. It wasn't much available on the market yesterday, so we got grouper, which is just as good. Well, the thing, though, it's we're making it in, like, Veracruz style, so you can right. use whatever you want, but this is just a kind of a sauce and a style of cooking something, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. It dates, it dates back several hundred years. Veracruz is a big port city in the, in the Spanish later they're both their east east coast gulf of mexico so okay it still holds strong and it's still a regional dish that is used to this to this day oh, so far it smells pretty good yeah so we've got some olive oil you put into a really hot pan yep, yep. i'm gonna put some garlic in to start okay you want to make sure your pan's hot now why is that it's because you uh, don't want the garlic to uh well you want you want to saute it you don't want to uh steam it you know, I got a low you. temperature okay. will cause uh, vegetables to steam in oil as opposed to saute you just want to get a little bit of color on it okay and then pretty much immediately, you're gonna put in your jalapenos. Now, if you wanna make this a little bit not as spicy, yep, you probably yep, put it's yeah. to your particular taste. You can add or take away. Mm -hmm. Or you can maybe take the seeds out to make it a little less spicy. True, exactly. yes. All you right. We, we, we like it spicy. I mean, I don't blame you. I do yeah. too. If you're gonna go have some Mexican food, get a kick on it. <laughs> so, next is onions? Yeah, we put yep. the onions in right away. These three pretty much go in for a very really quick timeline. Okay. You wanna kinda. That's what they say, the, the beginning, like the things you always put in first are the garlic and the onions. Yep. So what makes uh, Veracruz sauce specially different? It's, it's a light sauce. It's a good warm weather sauce, and you can yeah. make it at home quickly. You can use it on grilled fish. You can use it on baked fish. A lot of times people make the sauce and put it over a raw filet and just broil it. Oh, so you can do good. it a lot of different ways. We've seared the fish ahead of time, but yeah. you can do it that way, and just and it's a no-brainer. You know, put it in the oven for 15 minutes and be done. But the sauce is the dish. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's and then whatever you put on, it's the vessel for the sauce. Because exactly. the sauce is really the star exactly. of the show. Yep. Yeah, in the region, you know, it has three major influences: uh, indigenous Spanish and Afro-Cuban. Mm -hmm. And then as you travel up and down, the Veracruz spans the majority of the coast and the and the Gulf side. So uh, as you go northern, you'll find more heavily uh, Afro-Cuban, and as uh -huh. you go uh, south, you're going to find more things that are indigenous, uh, actual Spanish. Gotcha. And, you know, with these things came olives and capers, stuff that they didn't have originally, you know, when, when people immigrated there. Mm -hmm. So next we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our tomatoes. Okay. Now, are these canned tomatoes, if you're doing it at stewed, home? Stewed, stewed tomatoes. Stewed tomatoes. So you yeah. can get the, those in the can, You though, can right? buy those in the store. Okay. So, so far, so good. This is something easy and people have almost right. all this stuff already really at home. Really easy. And add a little more olive oil to it. Yeah. You know, it kind of looks like a spaghetti sauce, actually. <laughs> a little bit. I'm sure it doesn't taste at all like a spaghetti sauce. So next we have a couple more things here. Are these scallions? Those are scallions as garnish. Okay. We're going to add some Mexican oregano. Mexican? Yeah. How is that? Is that different from regular it's, oregano? It is different. It's it's a larger, sweeter variety. Oh, if you okay. Can, you can find it in some stores. It's not readily available, but if you look around, you can definitely find it. Maybe you can go to like the specialty section of yes. fancy grocery stores, that you kind could, of thing. Uh, you know, more commonly nowadays, in, in a lot of neighborhoods, you find that you're going to find uh, smaller ethnic markets. Exactly. Right. I mean. Everywhere you look. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you want to bring the fish out so we can show it off. The fish everybody? is just about ready. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're going to add a little of our. This is uh, an optional secret sauce, but this is our. All right. This is our uh, enchilada sauce, which is a, which is a spicy chili sauce. You can buy this. It's probably easier to buy than to make at home. So if you're going to make enchiladas, I don't, I don't want to guess your recipe. I'm thinking <laughs> there's tomatoes in there. There's peppers in there. Dried chilies. Onions. Onions. All right. Yeah. That's you, all you I want to give away, it's, though. It's, just, it's an extra addition just to make it a little more viscous. Okay. It's a little more sauce-like. Yes, yeah, so, and, and then, then you can top it like enchiladas and make it really exactly. kind of ooze out on the plate. Exactly. And now these are, these these olives? are Spanish olives. Spanish, Spanish olives, olives to finish. Okay. Huh. We can cover it and let it steam and then grab the fish. All right, let's do that. Great. Some capers on top. Hold so it. the fish, how you had it at 500? You're searing it? Yes. Finish it. We sear it off. And we're finishing it at a, in a hot oven for about four minutes. So at first, did you put it on the pan, in the pan? Exactly. Okay, and then you're now, finishing Now, as I said, you can it. grill it, or you can go raw with the sauce on top and broil it. Okay. So it's a lot of applications for the sauce. And now, what kind of fish is this again? This is grouper. Grouper. And yeah. traditionally, you can do it with uh, all different kinds of fish. Snapper, you'll see a lot of snapper on the east yeah. part of the Gulf, and a lot of reef fish, like grouper, too. Is grouper a fishy fish? No, it's, it's actually not. It's steaky. It's, oh, it's okay. Got a, it's got a good... Like a swordfishy kind of? Like the consistency of the yeah, swordfish or tuna? It's more durable, so you could grill it. It's not like a cod or a haddock, which is going to be flaky. Gotcha. So it has a little more body to it. All right. Well, hey, why don't we take a little break, because later in the show, we're going to 
give some drinks to this. So don't you go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to show you how to make a delicious margarita to go with your meal. It's time for Taste Appeal. We're continuing. We just made a delicious Mexican dinner recipe, oh, yes. and now the drinks to go with it. And we are with Greg Lon. He's from Mission Cantina in Amherst. We're making two margaritas. The first one with hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Never heard of that before. Yeah, it's a it's a flower that grows in Mexico, and um, what we do is you take the dried flowers and make a simple syrup with it, and then strain the flowers out so you don't get chunks of flower. Yeah, no one it. wants it gives, a chunky margarita. Gives it a nice flavor. All right, well, well, the flowers are pretty, so it must taste good too. <laughs> exactly. So how do we get started? Um, you know, some fill ice it, always. Fill a glass with ice. And you want to fill it to the top? Yeah, I like to. Okay. Um, now, Greg, can you make the make margaritas without the alcohol? Absolutely. <laughs> Is that a silly question? If you're maybe pregnant. If, you're, if you can't drink it, but you still want to try the high Yeah, you know, we we get those requests a lot from people who either don't drink or pregnant women mm -hmm. to make. Yeah. You know. The, a virgin, you still a want virgin margarita. Fancy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't want to just get water and soda because no. you're out at dinner. Good I for know. you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good for okay, you. Okay, so we put ice in the so glass. So with this one, we uh, we use a reposado tequila because it's got a little bit more flavor, and you do about a shot, which is about a three count. And it's a dark tequila too, or darker. It is. It is. It's aged in wood, so it makes it gives it that nice color. And, and then now, we use an orange. Oh, sorry. Uh, when you when you say taster, does that mean it's like a more pungent tequila taste? Well, when it's aged in wood, it picks up the flavor of the wood. Uh, depending on which wood you use, it'll either make it spicier, or smokier, or sweeter, huh. depending on what they age it in. A lot like they do with wine, with different exactly. Yeah, they and do bourbons. that with some beers yep. and yeah, whiskeys and all that. Yep. So then we're just going to use an orange liqueur. We're using Cointreau, which is a nice light orange liqueur, just a splash of it to add a little extra flavor. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to use our house mix, which is fresh lime, fresh orange, and. Uh, lemon and agave nectar. Oh, so you, you can go out and you can buy margarita mixes in stores, but is, is it that easy to make your own house mix? It's very easy. It's just the labor of squeezing the juice. <laughs> That's but it, true. It, it makes, I'm sure it pays off oh, as I was thinking well. just oh, get a bottle it. of orange juice. It makes, <laughs> oh, yeah, you can. You, yeah, the lazy a lot of places. Yeah, you use a really good fresh squeezed orange yeah. juice. You can do that, too. I'm just and, lazy. And then we're using the hibiscus simple syrup, which gives it a nice purple color. Oh, wow. Dark. I like it. And we shake it up. Always shake it. That's the part that makes me nervous. That's why I just, you know, let someone else shake it for you. <laughs> and now you're rimming the glass. You can do this. I, I, my wife, she rims water glasses with stuff now. She just loves to rim these glasses because it's fun and it's a festive way to drink something. It just makes it look cool, yeah. So this is a sugar rimmed glass or a salt this rimmed glass? This one I'm using salt. I'm going to use sugar on the next one because it's a little bit spicier. And I know you've done stuff before like with cinnamon rimmed glasses. There's so mm -hmm. many different ways yeah, you can do it. Yeah, we've used graham cracker crust before to rim glasses. Graham cracker crust. Yep. Well, the possibilities stuff. are endless. So we've got about a minute left, Greg. We're okay, make well. This other Sure, the next one we're going to make is a pineapple serrano margarita, and what we do there is we infuse some tequila with pineapple, which gives it a nice pineapple flavor. It makes it a little bit smoother. You just soak tequila in pineapple, chunks of pineapple. Yeah, it's funny, we were talking Sounds about this amazing. earlier, because a lot of people think you need to go out to get these really you know, fancy blends. You, All you do, take some pineapple, take some liquor, then you have pineapple liquor. It's that easy. <laughs> Put it no, together. it really is. It's got? that easy. It's step one, step two, you're done. So on this one, we use the Cointreau again. We use the pineapple infused tequila. For this, we're going to use fresh squeezed lime juice. Oh, so just lime juice, no margarita mix? Nope. All right. And then to sweeten it up and to add a little spice, we do a Serrano simple syrup where we take Serrano peppers, we steam them in the glass, strain them again, give it a shake. And we'll go sugar this time to uh -huh. offset some of the heat. So, so how hot is it? I won't be able to try it, so. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't try it. I'll tell no, you, though. We, I'll be sure to tell you can, during the commercial we can, break. We can take care of you, Ashley. Okay, yes, Greg's going to uh, take sure, care of yeah. me. Oh, good. Um, this one isn't overly spicy. It's got a nice spice at the end. Um, so it starts off sweet, and That's then it finishes it. spicy. Oh, it oh, smells wow. like summertime. Pair that, pair that with some of this. Look at how pretty. That's like a See, masterpiece. Yeah, that's like a Cinco de Mayo a couple months early. Great job, guys. I'm sure yeah, it tastes delicious. Yeah, thanks over everybody in the kitchen. Thank thanks you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Great to have you. Thank you. And now we're going to transition. This is a really exciting opportunity we want to let you know about, you know, working in media, obviously. We